Hey, what's going on, guys? Z here. I'm extremely excited now uh, starting this CNC Chinese chess engine from scratch with you guys. So uh, I've discovered this game just literally this night. Uh, I, I can't even say that it was yesterday. It was actually today after midnight. Uh, all this became possible thanks really to one of my subscribers here on Chess Programming Channel. So. Uh, in order to write a, an engine for a game, uh, definitely, first of all, you need to understand how to play that game uh, as a human. Well, at very least, uh, the very basics uh, of how the pieces are moving. So, just to give an overall concept of what in particular we're supposed to be doing, actually, and implementing. Uh, it took me quite a bit of time to get used to uh, the game of Sensi itself. Well, not even... Uh, uh, you might wonder that this Chinese character is looks like a little bit weird for for for, for the western consciousness but uh you know like uh now i already realized i've just realized after just playing a couple of games of cnc that playing with this character is for some reason it's more beneficial i don't know why uh even though uh i won't recognize a character if it's uh, alone on the chessboard but when they are all up together together i already know that these guys are the pawns here are the cannons rooks here uh, knights here bishops here uh, advisors and the general or king same for black uh well obviously using westernized pieces is also in the cards and we would be using those westernized pieces uh, especially when it comes to printing the board to the console when it comes to the board representation so what well, the uh, the program i'm using here is called wind board uh so uh, uh, Harmgert Miller is one of the authors of this program. It's it's really amazing. Initially, it's made for Windows, but I've managed to run this uh, on my Linux Mint system via uh, uh, via Wine emulator, and it also has some different board themes. So if I just do not if I just uh, remove this use space font, yeah, I'll probably need to put a link in the, in the description below the video so you could have. Uh, I'll d download this app, try to play around with this a little bit just to get used to it. And again, like uh, I guess that most of you guys are on Windows. And again, like uh, bear in mind the fact that we'd, we would be writing in JavaScript and uh, running the code completely in browser. Well, despite the fact later on, I would be, uh, I would really like to uh, add some uh, uh, mode to run uh, to run as a console application via Node.js to be able to play with other CNC engines. But that's a little bit. Uh, too far at the moment. So anyway, uh, we can use this westernized pieces, which probably a little bit better to uh, to understand for those who are not who didn't yet get used to uh, those Chinese characters. Well, well, again, like even for me, even with with the two two games, two or three games of a sense experience, I already feel like uh, using those Chinese characters is is beneficial for some unknown reason. And again, like. Uh, I have no idea how to play this game in terms of opening strategy. I've tried to, to have a look at a couple of videos, but I already feel that I, I fell in love with this game so much. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, in this video, uh, I will highlight how every single particular poof, uh, piece moves. And we'll also try to explain the game objective, which would be probably a little bit more complicated. Uh, because yeah, in this windboard, uh, app. I'm not sure how to um, set the board, say from FEN position. CNC also supports FEN, which which is good. Options, mutual sounds. Yeah. So not sure. But anyway, uh, let's try to have a, uh, have an idea of how the pieces moves. Uh, then I will try to explain uh, the state of checkmate and and the draw. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm not sure regarding the draw on my own uh, a little bit, but again, like it's all the matter of uh, stages uh, of development stages. So first, we'll uh, create a mode generator, make sure it's bug free, and then all these uh, tiny little details regarding uh, the uh, not allowing perpetual checks, uh, made in stale made in, which also wins in CNC. All this would be left for for search and evaluation part this this would be covered later on i hope uh, until that time uh i would be able to uh, obtain a better understanding but all we need to know about cnc in order to uh create a mode generator is only 
what's the board, how, how, how it operates, and how the piece is moving. Uh, moving. So, uh, okay, let's start. Uh, well, I know the pieces might be a little bit distracting, but uh, let's just leave them for now. So, the major difference from international Western chess is, is that instead of putting the piece uh, within the square, uh, the, the piece uh, uh, lands on, on these crosses. I don't know, probably there is a better term describing this, but if, uh, assuming the board representation, I, I didn't, uh, I'm not sure which in particular, well, that, that would be definitely an, uh, an array-based uh, array board representation and uh, array-based board representation uh, the mailbox uh, idea so trying to mm, like like in uh, 10 to well, uh, to 12 board representation in chess so the mailbox j j just to make sure the pieces are not going off words so yeah okay and okay so j j just want to show you one more little, little trick here so from the chess engine's perspective, when we would be representing the chessboard, uh, chess, uh, so that would be the array, and an array element uh, would be, tr it's easier to treat the array element as the square. So just to have a visual idea, uh, it would look like this. Uh, sorry, I uh, just want to draw the squares as well. Uh, okay, how can I? Native, yeah, use board textures, not, don't use, uh, okay, <laughs> okay, it's a little bit tricky, sorry guys, uh, uh, default maybe, yeah, okay, this is it, the default, the, the, the default one, okay, so now we see that it's more like in international Western chess, uh, we have the pieces landing on the squares. So uh, if we want to uh, uh, figure out the size of the board, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares uh, width, and uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 10 squares ha uh, height and also bear in, uh, bear in mind the river uh, which uh, these two this kind of delimiter uh, between the two armies but it, it's uh, so yeah I guess this squares oh hold on a sec it's it's hard to, to tell me uh, it's hard to say w w where the river is uh, in the square based representation so let me just drop back to board them uh, board textures and piece fonts uh, nope only I don't need board textures so native oh, okay hold on a sec it's getting complicated okay uh, too, too many too many crosses there. Oh, that's because, hold on a sec. That's because he just draws this. So I don't really want him to draw. Mm. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry guys. Uh, I just feel a little bit... Mm. I feel a little bit confused. So I shouldn't be drawing this. This guy's here. Okay, maybe I just if I just restore the app. This this would be faster. Uh, okay, this is just gonna be a little bit faster, I believe. And yeah, so. 9 to 10 squares board and here we have the river yeah but literally uh literally it's just a matter of uh so some pieces uh like bishops these guys they can't uh, cross the river all the uh, all the other pieces can if i remember everything correctly so well river is just the visual stuff 
so literally it's just so square here square here okay yeah so just square 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 yeah so the river should be uh i'm just just trying to figure out the squares where uh bishop can no lo can no longer go through so if i just have a look at the board themes go into native uh Uh, no, I need to go for default. Default. Like this. So, this, this, this squares are the river. So, we can put the bishop here and here. Yeah, okay, so, hold on a sec. Yeah, no, now it's clear. No, th these colors are really helpful. So, uh, what's more is green, so bishop can't escape this squares. And this bishop can't escape this. Uh, or bishop or elephant can escape this uh, squares. Yeah, so this is quite pretty clear. Okay, so uh, I'm just trying to uh, to give you an idea of, of both the traditional representation and this square representation because uh, the board representation, the internal board representation of the engine would be uh, operating the squares, not not this crosses, but 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 the squares basically. So that's. That's important to understand. Uh, but mm, I just uh, I feel a little bit confused uh, with explanations of how, how to move the pieces because uh, the the visual the experience is totally different when when you're moving uh, m moving over the squares and when you're moving mo moving over. Uh, okay, so hold on a sec. When you're mo moving over. Uh, not squares, but this crosses. So, okay, let me go to mm, mode edit game. Okay, uh, let's cover let's cover both of them basically. So, uh, let's first get done with this one, and then we'll go to the traditional board. So, uh, here is the king. And here is the king. Uh, it's, it's it's called general. So general can go like crook. So it can get one step forwards, uh, and then he can go all only orthogonally, not diagonally. Okay. So let's drop back. Now uh, these two guys uh, uh, are known as advisors. They can't escape the palace. So this nine squares are uh, are known as the palace. So they can only uh, be moving here uh, within the palace diagonally. That's how they move. Okay, so they can only move here. Same for this guy. So he can't really go outside. Yeah, so he can only go uh, within he, within this square. To the the idea of this advisors is to protect the king from being checkmated. So that's the, the these pieces are absolutely defensive pieces uh, being responsible for kin safety okay so uh, again like let's start uh, yeah so let's consider that we have started from uh, from the kin so kin moves orthogonally and also kin can capture orthogonally so if it happens that that here would be a piece kin would be uh, able to capture this piece as well as for these guys well, literally all the pieces but cannons in CNC are capturing exactly the same way as they move. Okay, so let's just uh, pick up piece by piece and see how this is happening. So uh, the rook moves uh, exactly the same how the rook in uh, international international Western chess moves. So here, and you see, like you can capture this rook already. So just like a regular rook. So so it's very pretty. It's it's pretty simple basically okay so what's what's next uh, the knight goes uh, also like in uh, Western chess but uh, the knight you see like knight can go here and here because it's been blocked so if we treat the knight rook uh, knight road as going first here and then here okay so like two steps so if 
if, if here is a piece, no matter your own piece or opponent's piece, the, knight's, the knight is getting blocked. So that's the reason why knight can go here, because it's, it's getting blocked here. That's the reason why the knight can go here, because it's getting blocked. So it needs one step forward, one step diagonally, diagonally one step forward, one step diagonally. Okay? So, one, I'm just wondering, hold on a sec. Yeah, so that, that's the knights. Uh, the bishops uh, can move two steps uh, diagonally, but the bishop can't really cross the river. So you see, like, the bishop is the only piece that can cross the river. So it's it's, it's kind of like a defensive piece here. So bishops, uh, uh, elephants or bishops are not capable of crossing the river. Uh, and they can capture... So if here would be the opponent piece, uh, it's it would be possible to capture that with a bishop, yeah. But obviously, if it just uh, if that would be the own piece, uh, you definitely can capture. So the matter of not being able to capture your own pieces is exactly the same as in as in international Western chess. Okay, so let's drop back. So uh, we reviewed the the general, the advisors moves, uh, knights, rooks, knights, bishops. So now let's go to the pawns. So pawn can move one step forward. And what is an interesting thing that pawn can also capture one step forward. But as soon as pawn crosses the river, uh, it can also start uh, move, move, moving its sides uh, like this. So pawn can go here, here, here. And I think it also can capture to the left and right. So we'll now, yeah, it also can capture to the left and right. Okay, so... The amazing power of pawn of pawns. I, I really love how how it works. Okay, let's start a new game because uh, I would hardly be. Uh, yeah, and pawns are not uh, uh, are not about to be going backwards, so they can only move forwards. And here they can only uh, go forwards and uh, left or right. So just to bear that that fact in mind as well. And now the last piece and the most. Uh, the most interesting piece, the, the soul of CNC, as, uh, uh, as I would have called it, basically, because it's really essential. So, it moves just like a rook, okay? But, hold on a sec, just, uh, nope, I want to, okay, I want to edit the position, sorry. Edit game. So, it can move uh, like rook, okay? But, it cannot capture like rook. In order to capture... Uh, in it, it needs to have uh, exactly one piece in between. So in this case, uh, it can capture the knight. Well, this is a little bit uh, tricky to uh, understand first, probably. So now we can be capable of capturing this one. But that's how that is how uh, the cannon operates. So if we just start a new game and uh, mode edit position. So let's say I make a first move. So already we have a threat here. So what is the threat? The threat is we're threatening to capture this pawn. So let's say black does nothing. So hold on a sec. Where where did my the mouse disappeared? Hold on a sec. Mode. Edit game mode. Yeah, now it's back. So here, uh, let's say we move here. So now. We already have a threat of capturing this pawn. So let's say uh, let's say we start a game. So we are threatened to capture this pawn. So we can already protect this. Well, let's say we can do this by putting the knight here. So now if we're just trying to capture this, we get recaptured back. So I hope that's that's quite pretty clear already. So there are really lots of interesting tactics arising with using of cannons. That's incredibly interesting thing to consider. Okay, guys. So the the this is how our internal board representation would look like, basically. Uh, we would be printing this like board to console. Uh, I'll try, well, we already have the Unico characters for chess pieces. I'll try to find some Unico characters for CNC pieces if they ever exist, basically. Well, if not, not a big deal. We'll, we can try to use some, some different characters as well. So, yeah, and now I just want to quickly walk through exactly the same uh, process, but uh, on the traditional board and trying to put a few games uh, on my own and trying to well that would be absolutely weird move from the perspective of, of the game itself because 
uh, again, like I have a very, very poor experience of playing. Uh, already have a rich experience of losing in CNC, nevertheless. So, just want to quickly demonstrate you. So, uh, our GUI, so there would be two parts, like in Wukong.js. So, there would be the GUI part to play CNC versus computer in browser uh, online directly. Uh, so, yeah, it's that's kind of it. Making a tutorial is also also might be on the cards. So yeah, uh, and on the other hand, on the other hand, I think uh, yeah. Uh, on, on the other hand, uh, when it were so that that would be pr well, probably that would be the first thing. Well, I, I'm not sure yet uh, regarding how it goes, but another mode would be the UCI mode, or well, in in, in CNC that's probably called a bit different. Uh, it's, it's it's called UCCI, Universal Chinese Chess Interface, and uh, I've been uh, I've I've been looking uh, uh, for that, and and it seems to contain very similar commands uh, as the interna international uh, Western chess. So anyway, I just want to go to edit game mode and just want to try to play through the moves to give you an idea regarding the pieces. Well, maybe okay, maybe I just should. Uh, you might be a bit uncomfortable with this Chinese characters. So yeah, maybe I just can uh, go for westernized pieces again. But again, like I, I really uh, I really like these characters. It's, it's way more better to for, for me personally to to deal with. But even though I, I have no experience, but still. Okay, so let's actually try to go for default theme uh, and use board texture and use piece font. Uh, no, no, don't use the piece font like this. Oh man, no, it's not. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. Nope. No, not like this. Uh, board themes. Uh, default use board. You. Maybe like this. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. Sorry guys. Okay, just let's 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 try to sort this from scratch again. Uh, very max. No, no, no. Hold on a sec. Max C. This one. Mm. Okay, guys. I'm sorry. Let, let let's just really go for uh for for, for these characters because uh I don't. It, it it only seems scary. On the real deal, it's it's incredi It's incredibly eye pleasing to play with these characters. So. Uh, uh, anyway, we have uh, we have the highlights for uh, where the piece can go. So now uh, I'm about to move uh, my cannon. Yeah. Uh, by the way, before we uh, uh, before we proceed, uh, also a very very quick note regarding the piece weights, uh, relative piece weights. So on chess programming Wikipedia, believe, believe it or not, we have uh, a quite pretty nice uh, article on Chinese chess. Uh, okay, and here we have the values. So king has no has no value, just like in international uh, Western chess. So advisors is worth of two points. So let's have a look at the pawn. So pawn is worth of one pawn when it didn't cross the river, and. Uh, it, it's worth two pawns when it does cross the river. So let's say this is the hundred, like in chess. So let's say one hundred. So two hundreds if it crossed the river and it can move side sideways. So four hundreds and a half and four hundred. So knight is four hundreds. Uh, in chess, knight would be three hundreds. So here it's it's ready to be a bit stronger. So four hundreds. What about the rook? Rook is nine hundreds. It's like a queen. Okay, and uh, the cannon is four and a half, so cannon is treated to be slightly uh, more valuable than the knight. So it's 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 very similar to knight versus bishop uh, weights in international Western chess. Western chess, yeah. So the rook is most uh, is most valuable piece, 
nine, so like nine hundreds, if we multiply by one hundred by one hundred. So advisors worth just like uh, advisors and bishops have, have 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 the same, yeah, they have the same uh, value of two hundreds, just like the pawn that crosses the river, yeah. And again, like well, uh, bearing in mind the fact that bishops are not about to cross the river, they're more like they. Well, I, I think they should be treated as the defensive pieces. Okay, so I hope this is clear. So let's. Oh no no no! Don't, hold on a sec. Don't want to play. I just lose instantly. So edit game. So. So here I've just created a threat of capturing the pawn with a cannon. Okay, so. I don't know the openings, uh, I, I've been watching through the capital, of, but anyway, so let's try to support uh, this pawn with a knight. So if now I just capture, I get recaptured, and bearing in mind the fact that uh, cannon is slightly more valuable than the knight, so it's four, four and a half, and knight is four, it might be treated as we have lost material slightly. Even though in CNC uh, there are really lots of scenarios when one uh, is sacrificing the material for a long-term positional advantage, which makes the game really strategic, which is really awesome. But yeah, so that's that's how it that's how it goes. But I just want to uh, drop back a little bit. So here I'm not going to be capturing. Okay, so let's say. Uh, so this red and this is black. Well, for some reason it's blue, but uh, uh, I think the traditional way of calling them like red and black. And also I know that red are good guys and black are bad guys. So, well, anyway, uh, now this point is supported. So the next thing to consider, I just tried, try to bring the rook here. So trying to... Uh, Eventually, we want to checkmate the opponent's kin. Okay, so what to do with uh, what to do with the blacks? Well, let's try to develop the knight. It's, it's probably probably the moves that I'm making now is losing tactically horribly, and this this probably total total crap. But I'm just I just want to give you an experience of moving the pieces on the board with illegal moves. That's exactly uh, what we're supposed to be doing within our move generator. So this might be making some sense. So making. Uh, capturing pieces, capturing them back, making some checks. Okay, so now um, putting the rook against uh, the uh, against this diagonal, so to cut the king potentially. Uh, so okay, uh, I would be playing we uh, weird moves with uh, uh, with black pieces. Okay, and I would be trying to play good move moves with white pieces. So uh I don't know if I'm capable of checkmate in my own self in this way. Well, probably not, but yeah, we'll see. So here is the cannon, right? And uh, let's say I just hold on a sec. So just make a weird move. So it goes, goes. And now I'm crossing the river. And now let's say I capture the pawn. Okay. And. Now I also want to, now I can go uh, left and right as well. So yeah, let's go, hold on a sec, black's turn. Illegal move, hold on a sec. Oh, oh, now, we, oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. So now this is the check. Why? Because uh, this is the cannon and it captures Hold on a sec. Well, it's it's already a check, yeah. So the cannon would now capture the queen, uh, uh, king, uh, capture the king. So let's defend from that. Now I just want to uh, take this guy. Okay. Now I can take. Okay, I can take like that. Yeah, I couldn't take with with the advisor because uh, that would be a check again from this from this cannon. Okay. Uh, now it's not a check, yeah, but, okay, so if I now, so in order to make a checkmate, I just need to piece a, uh, put a piece here, so the cannon would be checking again, so what I have for that purpose, so I can, well, let's say I can move a knight, uh, so I can move a knight here, and I can move, I can move a knight here, right, so this is blocking only if I want to move here, so like here, yeah, it's a little bit, yeah, it's, it would be important. Okay, so now this is the check. So now, see, like, I can no longer move the rooks. Illegal move, because I'm under the check. 
uh, so yeah, so let's defend here. Uh, yeah, I can capture this. It's no longer checked, so uh, no, no, I just hold on a sec. Can I can I make yeah some different move? Okay, and now let's try to check. Oh, I can, oh man, I can't do this. Yeah, I just need to capture. I can't. Uh, okay, let's just try to capture all the pieces in this case. Uh, I just try to capture all the pieces available. Nope. Uh, okay, what else? So I need to. Uh, mm, So when I put the, some piece, yeah, let's put this knight here. And in this case, I would if I put them if I put my cannon here, this would be a check. Okay, so this is the check. Uh, uh, so hold on a sec. Is this? Is this already a checkmate? I just uh, I can get it a little bit. Mm, no, it's not yet a check. So this is how to defend. Okay, so I have. Okay, so two bishops were elephants still. Okay, so mm, cannon can capture, but in that case, uh, yeah. Okay, so just want to connect. Want to put my pawns into the game and and takes and now this is check again or yeah hold on a sec I could have I could have checked like this could have checked like this uh, well can would recapture and check here Here and now check here. This rook checks. Okay, still can go here. Uh, yeah, by the way, it couldn't go here. It's it's off board. Yeah. Mm. I'm just thinking uh, uh, what kind of pattern I need to make here to. Give a mate. Okay, so if I go like this, then like this, and then like this, then okay, here and here is this mate. Yeah, finally! Oh my God, I can't believe it! Yeah, finally, I got uh, I got I got this checkmate, white mates. Okay, so let's analyze this very last position. So just why this is mate. So this rook is attacking the king, and this rook is attacking his king. So this is like a linear mate in uh, international Western chess. Uh, also, if that was uh, if that was a stalemate, uh, so uh, the situation where the king is not. Uh, exposed into the check but wherever it goes uh it would get checked and if it, he doesn't have any other legal moves so yeah uh i'm sorry for, <laughs> for, for this weird crap here but uh i'm just i'm just showing you my current understanding of the objective of the game obviously uh, your opponent won't allow you doing this what i was doing here it won't be uh, moving rook back and forth but uh, j just wanted to try. Uh, just I just wanted to share this flow of what we're trying to achieve within this game. Uh, so I hope that's quite pretty clear. So at the very least, we've learned how to move pieces and how to checkmate opponent's king. So this is this is it regarding the demonstration. I hope uh, the square uh, the square representation. Uh, instead of this crosses representation of the chessboard uh, of the board is is also clear and now uh, before before we end uh, we end this video i also want to quickly highlight a plan uh 
on how it's supposed to be writing the CNC engine. And that's exactly the same plan that uh, I'm following uh, when I was writing chess engines in uh, inter international, we uh, ch international uh, Western chess engines before. So uh, here is the plan. So the very first thing to consider, uh, we need to uh, provide some variables uh, for board representation and piece encoding. Uh, so that's the first, sorry guys, that's the very first thing to consider. So again, like, uh, as, I, uh, as I've already man been mentioning, the board would be represented as as one dimensional array. Uh, I'm not yet sure exactly how many, uh, how many uh, files and ranks it would have. So we'll need to compensate the offset. So let's say the situation where, uh, well, let's say, just, just if I just started a new game uh, and add a game. So let's say we move with an ID here. So if knight goes offboard, so in order to wait knight uh, go in here, because within the array-based representation is literally like one long string, uh, we'll need to provide some offboard squares on the left, on the right, on the top, and on the bottom. I'm not yet sure how many uh, of them we need to have. I just I just really need to have a look at uh, the current existing implementations regarding this board array, because yeah, uh, just just to make sure that it works properly and. Anyway, uh, we have nine squares width and 10 squares height. So we, we would be having more than nine squares width and more than uh, 10 squares uh, height, but uh, I'm, I'm not really sure how, how many, how, how much more that would be. But anyway, uh, uh, already within the next video that, that would be defined, hopefully. So the next thing to consider is the piece encoding. So uh, we have, well, uh, let me just switch back to westernized pieces, uh, so it would be better to understand. Okay, so let's go to default theme and don't use the piece font. So, and the new game, analyze mode. Nope, not analyze, edit game mode. So, we have leapers and sliders just in international western chess. So, uh... Pawns, uh, well, uh, hold on a sec, I'm just wondering. Well, pawns, yeah, actually, it probably should be a special case, just just like in international Western chess as well. But, okay, let's drop the pawns for now. So, leaper and slider pieces. So, knight is a leaper piece. Uh, moves just like uh, a knight in Western chess, but it can be blocked, so let's say... Uh, if here was something, the knight is not capable of going. So it's not capable of going here because here is a piece, no matter your own piece or opponent's piece, the knight is, get, knight is getting blocked. So in this case, this is uh, how the slider piece works, but uh, so the knight is not leaping actually, so it's kind of sliding, but just sliding only two offsets and no longer. So yeah, it's a little bit it's a little bit hard to say. Can we can we consider the knight to be the leaper piece or not? Well, anyway, uh, the reason why I'm telling you this, so just to optimize uh, the mode generator from both uh, performance perspective and code size perspective, so to more is just in order to avoid branching and lots of conditions, like if there is no piece uh, in front of the knight and uh, then it can go and so and so so too too many conditions. Uh, so in Western chess, uh, the leapers and sliders can be easily distinguished by uh, bitwise ending with a specific uh, bit, let's say bit four, and that would be uh, affecting the piece codes basically. Also the color. So uh, in Western chess, we can use the bit 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 eight in order to. Uh, for white pieces and for black pieces, uh, uh, that would be equal to zero. So a bitwise end then a piece with eight would give us whether it's white or black, which is uh, which saves lots of code, etc., etc. So uh, again, I, I would rather have a look at the existing impl implementation. 
uh, just just to make sure to use kind of best best practices available there and yeah well we could have just uh, say like pawn is one uh, uh, knight, knight is two bishop is three rook is four like advisor is five uh, the, the canon is six king is seven and set and so on but yeah that, that would be just too long too slow too laggy so to, to speed up this uh, the performance especially bearing my bear, bearing in mind that we're writing in javascript we, we would be writing in javascript it would be better to give uh, a decent uh a decent piece codes trying to uh make some work on uh the architecture of, of those so as far as i came up with a solution uh probably already the next video would be explaining what which particular piece codes would be used and why exactly and how they would be operating so i think that would be a very a very good thing to kick start with so yeah that's that's kind of it so board representation piece encoding already starts uh, starting from the next video hopefully then uh what i always do is we want to print board uh which is the output and also we want to parse the fen so let's say uh maybe like parse fen and well start with a uh, i usually start with a print board so print board and parse fen so fen uh is the string representation of of a chess position it was also used in cnc as i've already uh, discovered that uh just just to give you a visual uh representation of cnc fen i found uh no it's not here oh by the way it's, it's available here as well so here here is here is the representation by the way this is the starting position right yeah this is the starting position yeah this is the starting position i'm slightly been confused by uh does it have 50 rule move it's a little bit strange yeah, so uh, I need to, to read about that more carefully. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm a bit. I'm a bit confused by. So. In Pazin Castlin, it doesn't have in Pazin. Doesn't have Castlin as well. So yeah, uh, I I would definitely need to figure out. So so th this should be like side to move, but uh, I'm not sure regarding what this character is represent. So I will need to figure that out on my own as well. But generally. The idea is to convert this sort of a string to initialize the internal chessboard array to give uh, somewhat like this uh, uh, array with with somewhat like, like this, and instead of pictures, we, we would be having the integer values. So to make some bitwise bitwise bit bit operations with to distinguish the color, whether it's a slider or leaper, and so on, and so on. So yeah that's that's how it's supposed to be going so input and output and as soon as we would be able to input the fvn position that that's uh, very very uh, very nice from the testing perspective so yeah that's that's the way to go the next thing to consider when when it comes to the the casual western chess engine uh it's always creating a so-called e square attack function but in western chess uh the matter of keen uh being attacked is is the matter of uh so things like uh two kings facing each other is not traded to be an attack in western chess well it is in uh chinese chess so mm, that's the reason uh we're probably instead of using this e square attack uh there, there would be more complex in check function I, i'm not yet sure about about the routine but let's for now let's call it uh in check function so the idea would it be to so during the move generation we'll need we, 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 we would we would need to figure out whether the king has been exposed into a check or not in order to make uh only uh legal moves only those moves where we can uh deal with that check step aside if possible or defend the king or something or capture the attacking piece so j just like in western chess so in check function uh would be the next step then uh that would be the kind of huge part of uh generate moves uh that, that would be the pseudo legal move generator just like in western chess then uh make move 
make move take back functions uh, in order to be able to play through the variations. Uh, in Western chess, uh, the most issue comes with uh, handling the specific uh, cases like in, peasants, in peasant capture, castling. Uh, I'm not sure how it goes here, to be honest, uh, because I didn't do this before ever, but that's the way to go. And after the make, move and take back routines are done, we'll then need to go for so-called perf testing. And fortunately, I've already seen the perfed routine being implemented uh, within one of the CNC libraries here. Uh, so it exists. Uh, I, I was concerned that th there are no values uh, to uh, calibrate the mode generator with, but, but fortunately, it seems like we have some. So I have some CNC library in JavaScript, and here we have the perf test, which, so I'll just try to run this. So this 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 means that it should be contain so uh, I don't know probably for a starting position or for whatever. So uh, I think we, we would be able just to use it to calibrate to calibrate our engine. So I think that might be the case because we really need to make sure that uh, the mode generator is working properly. Otherwise, it's 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 a, it's a total disaster. Yeah. So then. After this, after the perf is made, then the next step would be to create the evaluation function. Uh, the most simplest form is just uh, to calculate the material. Uh, the matter of p-squared tables, like in Western chess, is a little bit questionable, and I had a, and I had, uh, a talk with Harm Geert Miller on talk chess. He's, uh, he was mentioning that it's a good idea to have two p-square table sets, one for attack and one for defend. This means like if your attack on a king fails, then you need to switch back to a different evaluation, forcing the pieces to defend your king. So again, like th th this, this is really a bit too far at the moment, but uh, generally it seems like that material weights and p-square tables only are applicable uh, uh, so the simplified evaluation is applicable to CNC, uh, but at the same time, the tapered evaluation uh, with the opening and end game phases is not applicable. So again, like, instead of this opening end game phases, it's more like if if we do attack or if we do defend, and it's not it's not a matter of interpolating values between the phases, but it's rather the matter of figuring out whether we are attacking or whether we are defending. And in case we're attacking, we use one p-square table set. In that case, if we're defending, we use an, we, we, we're using another. But again, like this is all bare theory, bare theory at the moment. So I really didn't have a look at that yet. So before uh, the bug free mode generator is created, it's not really uh, that interesting at the moment. So the very first thing to concentrate with is to create the bug free mode generator. So then as soon as we make this simple evaluation, well, uh, I don't know, probably uh, the material only would be already interesting to play with, at least for me as a human who has absolutely no, no experience in playing like real world games of CNC. So uh, bidding an engine, uh, let's say in Western chess, bidding an engine that only calculates material is quite pretty trivial because it's playing uh, very poorly from the positional perspective, so you can simply checkmate it. I'm not sure if that, that would be that easy with the CNC engine as well, but that would be definitely interesting thing to to try, I believe. Uh, and again, like at this point, it would already be a good idea to have an interaction uh, with the GUI. I, I'm not yet sure wh whether I'm supposed to be using uh, this Winboard interface. I don't really want this first because it's it's for Windows. Second, because uh, I, I'm not familiar with the Winboard protocol as well. So uh, I would try to look for some cross-platform UCCI GUI for CNC. To, to use so-called this uh, universal uni universal Chinese chess interface protocol to interact with, because that's very similar to uh, the Western chess UCI, uh, universal chess interface protocol. Yeah, so the next thing would be the search, the alphabet search with various optimizations, exactly the same like uh, we're doing in Western chess, like so starting with the Mughal reign and then all the bells and whistles. Uh, so yeah, uh, to increase the search depth and so on. And then, 
uh, well, I just call it GUI protocol. Not, not sure which GUI I'm supposed to be using. So yeah, j just to be able to connect to the GUI trying to play versus other engines, just to make sure it's capable of playing games. And then the tenth and the very last uh, would it be to create own uh, uh, to create browser interface, basically browser interface, something similar to what I've been doing with my OkunJS. So uh, <laughs> quite a fun thing that I already have a very fantastic background image that would perfectly fit the game of CNC, I believe. So uh, initially I was making this for chess, but uh, yeah, I think that for CNC, this sort of a background image, which I also have on my desktop as well, would be a perfect choice, really. I think this would be the perfect choice. Okay, just gone somewhere. Okay, doesn't matter. So this background image, so everything the same, but uh, just just a different board and just a different variant of chess. And by the way, uh, I was really surprised knowing that CNC is the world's most played variant of chess, believe it or not. It's a little bit tricky, but yeah, it's incredibly interesting. So that's, uh, that's the plan of what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, I'm not sure regarding the rating system in CNC, so how to measure so do they, uh, do they, how, how to measure the play, plane strength, uh, strength uh, of an engine. Uh, do they use uh, LO system uh, for LO rating system or some, someone else? Or uh, I have no idea. So that would be another objective to reveal. But yeah, so where, is, where did that go? They just gone somewhere. Okay. But I think this is going to be a very interesting and exciting journey into the world of CNC. So basically, this is it from my side, guys. So I'd like to welcome you all to this new tutorial series. And just just a, just a few words at the very end before we uh, be, before I stop this video, be, before I end this video. So uh, I will be following my Bitboard Chess Engine in C95 video series uh, methodology of uh, presenting the material. So I, I would be writing some drafts on my own, uh, trying to debug them. Well, sometimes I would be using some pre-coded stuff like in case with the board representation and piece encodings, just because th that's there is n nothing much to type, but rather to explain. But when it, but when it would be coming to the to writing the functions like print board, uh, yeah, I think that that's something that I would be doing in the live mode. Again, like uh, I, I, I would be just training before that, and then when I feel like that I can can make it properly, then I would be making this this videos like uh, probably one function per video. Uh, some videos like uh, parse FEN would be kind of pretty long because yeah, it's just uh, takes time because uh, and, and again, really, really lots of things to reveal still. But anyway, step by step, uh, we would be having. Uh, the blocks of code that hopefully we would be able to rely on. That's the general strategy while writing chess engines in general. So make sure to have those pieces of code you can 100% rely on their bug free. Well, obviously, perf testing would show. I've never ever passed perf test for CNC. This would be incredibly exciting. So, yeah, guys, this is it from my side. Thanks for watching. Uh, I really hope to see you. Uh, I really, I really hope you will join me uh, within this exciting journey. If you're not gonna be coding alone with me at very least, it would be fun if you just watch the tutorials and just sh share your thoughts, if any. But anyway, we would be writing this in JavaScript, as I've been mentioning already, uh, debugging this within the browser. Uh, Node.js and uh, console mode are, are coming much later, but that's quite pretty trivial to deal with and uh, to deal with as well. So that's. That's kind of it. From time to time, we'll probably be reusing some parts of code from my Wukun.js chess engine, some trivial reusable parts, like, I don't know. So we'll see how, how it goes, but I hope I hope this tutorial would be uh, really interesting to follow and exciting and resourceful. And and mostly, I hope this would be fun. Uh, uh, this would be fun. So this is it from my guys, uh, this is it from my side guys, until the next time, and take care.